Peterson with Everything Homemade. This is the fourth video in a five-part series on how to make cheese. Now, we learned how to milk, we dived into culture, and then we dived into culture making, and then this is where we're going through um, the utensils that you need and the cheese press. This is really, really important. Now there are some utensils you can buy at just the store near you, a dollar store or a Canadian Tire or a superstore, a real Canadian superstore, that's any, any place that sells kitchen stuff. But there are some things that is worth buying from an actual cheese making place. So what I'm going to do is going to show you some of the utensils you need. For making cheese, I'm gonna whether I'm gonna say whether you can buy this just anywhere or it might be important to buy from a cheese making place. Then I'm gonna dive into the cheese press that we made. So let's start. Let's start with the utensils first. First, you need a whisk. Highly important. Most kitchens have it. Have big enough whisk. For your pot. Second thing you need is you notice when I'm cooking there's I always have a cup to put my whisk and stuff in what I'm not using because sometimes you have to wait 15 minutes and you're using the same whisk. I just put it in a sterile cup. So any cup out of the your cabinet have around just make sure it's big enough for your whisk. Very very simple. The other thing that you need is a ladle. Now this just isn't any kind of ladle. You need a ladle with a lot of holes. Okay, as you can see. So this is actually a deep frying ladle. This one is KitchenAid. I just bought it from our Canadian Tire. I think I paid about 10 bucks Canadian. Um, it really, really beats the expensive ladles. Cheese making places sell. It is unneeded to buy this at a cheese making place. Just even go to your Dollarama, Canadian Tire, again, anywhere that sells kitchen stuff. Pick up a deep frying ladle. Works great. The other thing that you need is what recipes call is a curd knife. Basically looks something like this. This definitely is not a specialized curd knife. It is actually just a large icing um, uh, knife uh, from a dollar store. I think I paid two bucks for it, but it does the same thing. It needs to be long enough to go into your pot and you're just cutting the soft curds. So I don't think spending the amount of money on a specialized curd knife is really that important. So you can get away with just a, an icing knife. Works awesome. Now, what to spend the money at a cheese making place. One cheesecloth. Now this doesn't technically have to be a cheese making place, but you can also look on Amazon um, for it, but it's got to be cheesecloth for making cheese. There's a lot of different kind of cheesecloths out there. There's cheesecloths that mosquitoes can't come into, but it's not woven tight enough. You need cheese making cheesecloth. So look how tight mine is woven. This is what you need. You want it unbleached. Um, the one that I have is Cultures for Life. It's because our health food store actually brings in cheese making, some cheese making stuff from them. And that's why I have this one. It doesn't say how tight woven it is on the package, but I mean, it is really tight. So if you're going on Amazon, if you're looking for cheesecloth, make sure you guys, that it is really, really tightly woven and unbleached. So you really want a high quality cheesecloth. So this one's used. So when you use it over and over, I've made about 50 cheeses with this cheesecloth. It washes good and it holds together and it's really strong. Some of those cheesecloths, if I were to do this, I would have stretched it already. Highly important to buy a high quality cheesecloth. And always have an extra one. I always have an extra one, a brand new one, on hand. 
always because sometimes it rips sometimes I need a new one suddenly and I'm an hour away from anything so it's really important for me to have one here on hand now another thing to buy at an actual cheese making place or even in our town PV Mart sometimes brings them in is rennet you want a good rennet whether it's a liquid rennet or a tablet rennet I prefer the liquid rennet um, because it dissolves I know it's hundred percent dissolved you can go animal rennet or you can go vegetable rennet but you need some kind of rennet and you can order this all over the place um, cheese making places Amazon sells it um, where, wherever you're going you can buy rennet um, prices vary definitely so do your shopping so I'm going to put that rennet back, back in the fridge because rennet is really susceptible to temperature change and it needs to be cooled <coughs> so the next thing that is important that I can't buy where I live I live in a very small area so this isn't something that is stocked is a highly detailed specific thermometer and you need one that's not a meat thermometer you can maybe go digital if you can find one I didn't want to spend the money for a digital thermometer so when I ordered my cheese molds I also ordered a cheese thermometer mine is just small but highly detailed I can tell all the way from 0 to 220 Fahrenheit any temperature I want in detail highly highly important um, another another thing so let's dive into a couple of oddball things you need some kind of canning jar or some kind of jar glass jar with a lid canning jars work great you're not limited to canning jars just some kind of glass jar with a lid for making your cultures the other thing is you need salt salt is highly important now most recipes call for cheese salt the difference between cheese salt and just let's say a regular salt is cheese salt has no minerals in it it's usually bleached it is just salt um, I don't really care in all honesty whether it's cheese salt um, that I'm using I want a good high quality salt with the minerals because I'm not selling my cheese it's for our family and if I'm going to use salt and we're eating it I want it to nourish our bodies so I just use um, uh, mineralized as all the minerals you can see all the little dots salt in it um, so our cheese sometimes is a little tiny bit grittier very unnoticeable but if you are really really picky about it you can definitely pick it out or there's slight mineral specks in our cheese like I said I don't care it's okay for me if you are picky about it go with the cheese salt um, what else can I say molds I buy these from a cheese making place um, they are basically molds for you can get them for two gallons of milk you get them for four you can get them for ten there's different sizes but it's the mold and the lid it comes together <laughs> and there is a sticker believe it or not my kids think they're funny they stuck a smiley face speaker on my mold. Okay. Um, you need your lid and your mold. And these lids um, are for weights on top. So you want this kind of mold for the press that I'm going to show you. Okay. So that I can't find only a cheese place. So the other thing that I am going to show you is some bowls you definitely need um, some bowls and I have some night a nice big bowl here that's for when I have my cheesecloth here and I line my cheesecloth with over my bowl such as this then I just pour in my curds and whey and lift up my cheese but you will for like two gallons of milk you're gonna look at about a gallon to gallon and a half of whey so you need something to catch your whey now don't be limited to a bowl you can use a stock pot you can use a pail think outside the box I have lots of these big bowls because that's the family um, we have we have lots of large things so look around your house 
Again, every kitchen has bowls. You can use a metal bowl, a glass bowl, whatever bowl. When you take your warm curds and mix them up, you need some kind of deeper bowl there also. Okay, let's, uh, I think I went through everything. I'm just looking at all the utensils I have out here. I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to talk about the cheese press. Now, most of my subscribers know that I cap board, and we cap board in a serious way. We have anywhere between 8 to 20 some cats of, from clients from going on holidays or traveling all over the world, whatever they're doing, they bring their cats here to board them because we do it in a home environment. So that means I have 8 to 20 cats running around the house making cheese is a little hard. So the biggest dilemma we had was how do you set up a cheese press that the cats aren't going to lick the way they're not going to claw the cheese cloth, tug at it, bite at the cheese and just make a big mess basically. So we put our thinking caps on. Okay, so what we came up with was this, a pail. First, let's start with a pail. And this pail, um, you will see them at cheese, at, sorry, not cheese, um, ice cream shops all over the place. And you can just go there. And mine was selling them for a buck a pail. And just a pail. Just get a pail of some kind. Okay? Preferably, it's got to be tall. This one's about a foot and a little bit. Um, so you need the height. You can't have a short pail. You need something where you can have your cheese um, mold in here like this and then your weight stacked up so they don't fall. So these pails just work really well. So that's your basic part of your cheese press. So there's a dollar right there. Let's say you had to buy that. The big other expense that you're going to have to buy are the molds. Now I paid 18 bucks Canadian for this mold. So now we're up to about $19 for this cheese press. So this mold goes into it at the bottom, sits at the bottom, just like that. The biggest expense to this cheese press is the weights. Now, every recipe has a different weight amount. Some say press for 15 pounds at first, then increase to 20 pounds, then go up to 30 pounds, then finish at 50 pounds. So you need to have weights in 10 pound increments and five pound increments. So I just went to my Canadian Tire store because that's what we have here. You can go to any exercising store. In fact, you can go to any place that sells weights. And I'm talking about these kind of weights. This is a 10 pound weight and this is a 10 pound weight. So if you take a look at these weights, they are different sizes in diameter big difference and that little bit is very important and I'll tell you why. So I'm going to put this one down and this one. Before I say why, you also need some five pound weights. Again, one variety, this is the other variety, a little bit smaller. Okay? So what I didn't realize at first was how important it is to find the weight that is so close to the diameter of your pail and the this cap brand is literally an eighth of an inch off so if you can see it just it just goes in nicely okay and that's highly important because when you're stacking your weights if you put a 10 pound and a 5 pound weight in no big deal but when you're stacking it up to 50 pounds of weight if it is not close, really close to the diameter of your pail, it's so heavy that with it pressing down on the curds, it's going to wobble and then it's going to spill and all your weights spill on an angle in your pail and you don't get a good press. So what happened was these weights are a little bit smaller. I have a lot of playroom on all sides. Actually, I have about an inch of playroom, which is too much. So what I end up doing when I'm making, now I have two cheap presses, so I have two of these molds, two of these buckets, two sets of weights. So when I have them both going, 
what I do on the brand that has the correct diameter, I start out with that. So I take the 10, one 10 pound on that brand and that same brand, I start the other one and then I start stacking up the smaller ones. So my first weight is proper and tight. Um, that's how I solve my problem. But when you're shopping for weights, you guys, check the diameter of your pail, make sure the diameter of your weight is very close to matching the diameter of your pail. And remember, with these weights, you're grabbing from the inside. So if you can't slip your hand in here, that's actually a good thing because you're going to be grabbing your weights from the inside of the weights and putting them in and not from the outside. So you want a tight fit. So I really want to stress that because that's what I found out. I was able to solve my, my problem or my dilemma, but if you're going brand new right away, that's something very important to think about. Now I bought in groups, so I have on both sets of weights, I have four 10 pound weights and I have two five pound weights. So on each um, cheese press, I can press up to 50 pounds. <clears throat> so that works for most recipes. So that's our cheese press. Again, for one set of weights, I paid 55 bucks. So really under 100 bucks for an awesome cheese press that's animal proof, that does awesome. This is just such a great alternative. The only thing that I will try next year is I'll make a little hole at the bottom here just so it kind of sits over this like just just in the bottom so it just kind of has a lip like if this was a sink just to drain into the sink because I find at the last 15 hour press I always every time I flip the cheese I always drain my pail because there's always a way at the bottom but at the 15 pound or 15 hour mark where you're pressing for a long time I want more way to drain out while I'm sleeping so I may just do, like, I'm talking a slight angle, just enough for liquid to flow the opposite direction and just have that drained. That way the cats still aren't getting into my pail. So that's one modification I will make next year. So why do I say next year? Because my cow is going to calf in about three months, and this is the last month that I am milking her, and I just put this... Um, cheese making video on at the tail tail end where she is actually decreasing her milk so this is probably going to be almost the last time I make cheese until she freshens out again so that's really important is a cheese press now if you don't like my idea no problem go ahead look around there's tons of cheese presses to buy you can take a look of other people's this just works really good for my circumstance and for my budget other than that those are the important um, utensils and the cheese press to have to start making cheese there will be other little things but you can just adapt it to the recipes be creative is all I can say um, if you are on a budget, be creative. You don't have to have exactly what they have as long as it does what it needs to do. And you can really make cheese on a budget just by not buying everything from a cheese making place and buying something else that works just as good. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.